All right, everyone here who'd like to be here, going to learn about GraphQL. Of Yvonne here. Uh, he told me a little bit about his talk last night at the pre-event party. If you missed the party, um, it was a great time, but at least you'll get to hear some about GraphQL. So I'll turn it over to you. Thanks. So my name is Ivan, and today I will talk about API tooling and why, why I think GraphQL is a game changer in that field. So uh, you know, as usual, a little bit about myself. I work in a company called Apis Guru. Basically, we run this company together with my friend, Roman. And uh, we specialize in API consulting and developing API tools for our customers. Uh, all our tools are open source. You can find them on GitHub or on our website. And as you can see on this slide, we are pretty productive. Uh, we, we're based in Ukraine, and we work in a local co-working place with no dress code. Uh, so what is GraphQL? So GraphQL is a graph query language. An important part is the query. You can see example of a query in top portion of the slide. It looks like a JSON, but without the values. And response is actual JSON. You have the same fields, exactly the same fields, but with value attached. So uh, I'm surprised how many talks on this conference have GraphQL as the main topic. Uh, that's why I will use my 20 minutes on the stage to focus more on API tooling. Uh, if, you know, uh, if you want to know more about uh, GraphQL in general or have uh, like bad introduction in GraphQL, I recommend you to, uh, to listen to these talks, at least some of them. So uh, let's define what API tooling is. Probably uh, any, uh, any of you can write a uh, like, uh, small script to call IP endpoint. And in this case, it's JavaScript, and it took me like 18 lines of code. And you can do it like shorter one. And probably in your favorite language, it will take you like three or five minutes. But obviously, you don't write a code every time you want to test IP endpoint or check new, new API. There is specialized tooling for that. And it's safe to say that CRL and Postman are the most popular API tools at the moment. Anybody using it every day? Or at least working days? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're in, on the right to talk, and I will tell you about the future of API tooling. So uh, that's not all API tooling. There are other popular examples are SDK generation, documentation generation, or API consoles. Uh, but if you look closely, I stole this slide from uh, Nordic's API, and it's a really good illustration of uh, API lifecycle. And if you closely look at different elements, you can find API tooling everywhere. So if you um, if you design a new API, you can benefit from a mocking tool. So you can mock your API before you develop it. Uh, to start development, you can use some code generation to pro, uh, produce server side uh, stops. And when you go to production, you can use API tooling to monitor your endpoints and, for example, measuring uptime or latency. During the last couple of years, we developed a few tools, and every time we have a problem, somebody tries to use our tool, spend some time on it, just to figure out it's not working with his API. And uh, why it's happening? REST is dominating technology in IP ecosystem at the moment. And the uh, important part about REST is architectural style. That means define set of constraints to follow, but it doesn't define how exactly to implement them. And it's, that leads to never-ending discussions. As you can see on Stack R4, like, uh, what should I use? put versus post, how, uh, where I should put my parameter, header, query, path, and like many other questions. If we talk about, about uh, HTTP status code, it's like separate topics, and I heard like entire talks dedicated to that, just, just that. And uh, this amount of freedom leads to API design, which is, can be beautiful, consistent, and pleasant to use but they're unique as snowflakes. And 
if you work with your own API or if you work with a limited set of APIs, it's not a problem for you. However, if you in situation when you're building a tool which is supposed to work with a uh, wide range of API, it's like uh, it's sort of disaster for you. You cannot adapt your tools to snowflakes. Uh, how we can solve this problem? Like standardization. Uh, standardization happened in many fields, and right now it's happening in API world. So there is a number of competing API specifications at the moment, like SOAP, Josian API, Hydra, and more recently, uh, Google released gRPC and Facebook GraphQL. You can think it's a problem, but comparing, uh, like, big number of specific uh, competing standards, but comparing to Snowflakes, it's great, uh, it's a huge step forward. Uh, and I have an analogy for that. Every time I go to conference to ES, I'm annoyed that I need to bring a lot of uh, adapters to plug my laptop, my phone charger, and other things. But think about it. It's only 15 competing standards around the globe. And compared to a situation where every vendor of electric equipment produces their own standard, or every house has its own standard, or every hotel has a so, like, uh, I think uh, competing standards are better than, like, unique things, at least for, from IPI tooling perspective. So, how it's related to GraphQL? Uh, nowadays, there is a lot of buzz about GraphQL. You can, a lot of talks and articles uh, mentioning different pros and cons of this technology. But few remember that GraphQL is actual specification. It's a strict format, it's formal specification, and you can find the specification on GitHub, and you can actively participate in its develop, development. You can open issues and PRs, and you can contribute. Uh, moreover, GraphQL have many uh, server-side libraries for popular languages and environments, and all those implementations behave exactly according to the spec. This differed it from API framework popular nowadays. Like, if you took Flask for Python, Spring for Java, uh, they like they consistent only across one language or one platform. Uh, specification allow you to do the same stuff, but consistent across many different languages and platforms. Uh, moreover, together with uh, Spec, Facebook also released uh, reference implementation in JavaScript, and it helps to solve all remaining uh, discrepancies. If something isn't clear in the Spec, you can see how it's implemented in GraphQL.js. But it's important to strike a balance between flexibility and standardization. And I think uh, GraphQL did, uh, did it right by specifying how queries are validated, executed, and uh, how response should look like. But at the same time, it's a low uh, flexibility, a low you to choose transport layer and serialization format. And if we return back to power pack analogy, uh, when I say that my tool should, should work with HTTP plus GraphQL plus JSON, it's like equivalent of showing you power pack. And you understand if it fits your IP or not. You don't spend that time and experiment. So we discuss uh, 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 GraphQL specification give us enough information how to call IP, how to pass parameter, and what response to expect. But for more complicated tools, for tools more complicated than a Postman or CRL, you need to know more info about target API. Let's call it metadata. And uh, here is an example of uh, API documentation engine we built for our customer. And it's fully powered by open API. That means uh, things like HTTP verb and meta description and uh, type uh, for parameters and description for parameters are coming from open API spec uh, and as Bill told you today we also build a catalog of API specification as biggest one at the moment it's 565 specs and we learned 
couple of things. Uh, after working on a both project for the last couple of years, we learned things about uh, specification and uh, similar to open API like RAM or API blueprints, there is a couple of them. So uh, the biggest problem, uh, it was designed as an afterthought to document existing variety of IPS. So these formats are formats to document snowflakes. And we have two consequences. A specification format are very complex. You need to add support for a bunch of different features. And with time go by, they became more, more and more complicated. And the second thing, in many cases, specification is detached from implementation and is out of sync. GraphQL, on the other hand, uh, comes with building mechanism called introspection. And it's very similar to reflection in uh, some of programming languages. Uh, important thing in GraphQL, everything is strong typed. Uh, arguments are strong typed, responses are strong typed, everything based around types. And using this mechanism, you can uh, send the queries and get this type information directly from my server. So it's always in sync. It's always uh, one source of truth. There is no, because server use this data internally to validate request. So if it's out of sync, it cannot be out of sync because it's used for validation. And if we use it in tooling, we always have the proper and same data. Uh, receiving JSON uh, description of your IPA is not very sexy. Uh, also, people are wondering why GraphQL have a graph in the name. So I will show a GraphQL Voyager tool, which use introspection to build interactive graph view. And it was our first project uh, in GraphQL field. And it allows you to traverse this type system to follow different links. But most importantly, it worked with any GraphQL API in existence. We didn't code anything specifically for this particular API or any other GraphQL API. It's just a matter of plugging it into your API. And uh, another interesting thing, one of uh, one of the companies which used this tool, uh, they told, uh, told us that they've finally can explain managers what GraphQL is. Because like previously they tried to explain uh, about endpoints, uh, multiple endpoints versus one endpoint, and uh, optimization and blah, blah, blah. But when they show this graph to a managers, managers say like, we finally see business domain. And this is really, it's, a, it's not a graph of your IP, it's a graph of your business domain. Uh, so, if anybody read my uh, abstract for this talk, you can spot that I promise you to show a useful API tool, API tool written in less than 100 lines of code. And I don't have a time for live demo, but I prepare a couple of GIFs. Uh, source code released uh, on GitHub, you can try it yourself. And feel free to report any issues if you discover one. So oh, how it's working, uh, you start from the middle. So uh, in a second, when it's actually, okay. yeah. So as you can see, it's like coverage too. It show you a coverage for your IP. So you started it as CLI command, you specify URL to your GraphQL IP. And you presented with two links. One link is to show your coverage map, uh, and another is like two code graphical for making interactive request. And as I showed you before, you can exp export the graph. But what's important, every time you make a query, you, you see a coverage for that query. Some fields became green. You can add more fields, and more fields became green. And you can even uh, traverse a graph. Uh, you can expand your query and specify additional types. 
And you will see that uh, fields and other types became green. And it has certain properties. It works with any API, any GraphQL API. Currently, it doesn't support authorization, so you cannot pass your security token. But everything beyond that, everything should work. Uh, I release source code on, uh, on GitHub. And if you want to play with it, it's very easy to install. I also release uh, npm package. You can install it, and the only it supports only one option, so it's almost zero configuration. It's one config option. You route to your API. In future, I will need to add uh, authorization tokens, like authorization headers. And uh, as you can see, it's entire source code. So on on the left, you see HTML, so it's front end. It's things that visualize the graph, and we reuse our GraphQL Voyager tool for that. And on the right, you see server side implementation. And what's more importantly, it's 99 lines of code, as I promised. But if you look on GraphQL specific lines, it's it's only 16 of them. It's one line to import uh, different stuff from uh, GraphQL JS library. And uh, it's provide a lot of. It's not only a reference implementation, but it provides you a bunch of useful functions. And uh, next thing is to get introspection. And the last thing is actually things that uh, figure out uh, what fields are used in your query. And usually. When you explain GraphQL to people, they wonder why why you make queries in your own format. Why not to use JSON or XML or anything, any existing serialization format for queries? Why uh, GraphQL invents a non language? And more importantly, for tooling, how we, how can we work with this uh, this format? Because in tools, you, you need to be able to manipulate this query and uh, GraphQL. JS provide you a parser. We generate IST, and IST looks scary and complicated, but it have everything inside. And to make it more manageable, uh, it also provide a visitor function, and you just specify IST there, and you specify. In this case, I specify I want to call this callback on every field, and they also provide. Uh, some additional adapter to get the type information. So what this code is basically doing is traversing your query and calling callback for every field. And I get the name of parent type and name of a field and check it's like user fields. It's not like some internal, uh, internal fields that start with double dash. And I add it into coverage map. So if you have any Questions uh, you can ask them after like all three talks. Plus, you can f find me uh, during these two days and ask me about GraphQL in general. And uh, if you if you have some idea for for API tooling, we're really interested in that. Plus, we have uh, I encourage you to go to our website. It's ips.guru, and there you can see uh, our our. our other tools, GraphQL tools, like we have a tool for uh, query manipulation called GraphQL Wadash. You can put uh, put uh, query transformation directly into query. We can we have mocking tool for GraphQL APIs when you can start uh, and mock your tool in under like five minutes, and that's probably all. Yeah.